What's going on there, kings and queens, and everyone between? It's your boy MSC coming back at you with yet another video, and I'm not going to waste any of your time. We're going to jump right into the patch notes. Let's get to it. All right, as you all know, it's November 17th, a patch that was supposed to come out on the 15th, but got delayed because, of course, the Overwatch team would delay it. You thought you were going to get something ASAP on time. Yeah, that's not how the Overwatch team is rolling. Not in Overwatch 2, baby. But with that being said, you're getting some skins. You're going to get some competitive match play and matchmaking things that are actually going to make things a little bit better. So you don't have like random silvers in your masters games and golds in your GM. Like it, it, we're doing away with that. Allegedly, they updated the defense matrix, not to be conf confused with Diva's defense matrix, but they're, you know, anti cheat, so to speak. So now they're going to be able to make sure that people are banned for voice chat recordings. And players will now receive a notification when entering a voice chat for the first time during a play session indicating that their voice chat may be recorded. So now they're being upfront with everything and hopefully they tighten their anti-cheat behind the scenes. But enough of that. Crossplay and aim assist. Now, if you have someone who's playing on console and you're a PC player and they don't want to play with you because they didn't have aim assist and they couldn't aim and they couldn't track at all and they were basically a useless anvil rock anchoring your team down into the abyss, you don't have to worry about that. Now, when you're doing crossplay in quick play and custom games and things of that nature, and pretty much every mode in the game, not called competitive Overwatch, they will not have their aim assist back. So good luck. Good on you. That's a good change to see. Now for the things you actually care about. Diva. Fusion cannon spread getting increased from 3.5 to 3.75. Boosters impact damage going from 25 all the way down to 15. And this was something that was fixed in the last update. The call mech getting the ultimate cost reduced by 12%. So this is already in the game before this patch. So if you've been playing, don't even worry about this. It's already here. Now, these first two, while you may say they could be annoying and you can feel the effects, it's not enough to where anything that you were diving originally doesn't already die. Like this is a very slap on the wrist. You could play D.Va in the exact same way and manner in which you were playing them before. Maybe there's like a, 3% chance of things that killed before won't die now, but I haven't really felt that in my uh, short experience with the patch. Now we move on to Big Girl Zarya, aka Black Air Force Energy, aka the Black Devil, aka the demon that lives underneath your child's bed. I'm telling you right now, is this character dead? Absolutely not. The duration of both barriers are going down to two seconds, what they were in Overwatch 1. Now, as you know, the cooldown of the bubbles has been increased from 10 seconds to 11 seconds. So they're going to have a little bit more cooldown in between when they're going to be able to use each barrier. Now, granted, a lot of people are saying is two seconds enough. Did we actually get rid of this character? And I'll put it to you like this. Five seconds is more than four seconds. So it is a nerf. But I know a lot of people complain about this character for having a four second defense matrix. Y'all hate this character for having that four second defense matrix. Y'all despise it. You're like, How long does it last? Why does it last this long? Now, granted, this one covers up a lot less circumference, a lot less real estate when it comes to a bubble, but it also cleanses and turns her into a four second unstoppable beast S tier, basically unchallengeable object. Like you're literally facing big breasted, big armed God walking you down. And there's not a damn thing that any of you peasants will ever be able to do about it. Bow down to your queen, your empress, young Zarya. As the developer comment here says, early player sentiment predicted Zarya was one of the weakest solo tanks in 5v5. Although her high damage potential and barrier uptime have proven to be extremely effective for opponents, feedback has indicated this could feel as though Zarya has a very limited window of vulnerability, which, here we go, which feels difficult to deal with when combined with her ramping damage potential. So they didn't touch the damage potential. They touched her uptime with bubbles, and I don't think they really did a good job of that. Now, the second part, in the super higher upper echelon where every second cool, cool down punishment is going to be happening with consistency, when teams know when to group up, who to heal, game sense, and prioritization is all on point, this actually might be something that actually brings her down a little bit closer towards the norm. But as far as, like, suboptimal play, this character is still the same Black Air Force ski mask energy that you've been seeing being radiated in quick play and all the metal ranks up till today like there's still this this character is still a demon but speaking of ski mask energy we got young genji genji has greatly benefited from the move to 5v5 
and the fact that a lot of the stuns are no longer in the game. And changing to a single tank meta, the reduction of crowd control, okay, they did bring it up, has removed a lot of obstacles for Genji. However, he hasn't received tuning updates since he wasn't actively in the meta until launch. Yes, because every time you added something into the Overwatch 1 move pool, you somehow was kind of giving a backhanded nerf to Genji, but I digress. An international, international, an intentional decision. Uh, I guess it was worldwide, he sucked, but an intentional decision based on our general preference to avoid preemptive adjustments when possible. These changes will bring Genji more in line with the other flanking damage heroes like Tracer. Yeah, we'll get into that in a second. And Reaper. Reaper, who is apparently a must pick in Overwatch League, and every team is running him in Overwatch League. They're not running Genji, but once again, I digress. Maximum ammo reduced from 30 to 24. Damage reduced from 29 to 27. This first change means you're going to be reloading a lot more often. The second change, you're doing less damage. Combine those two things, a lot less Dragon Blades for you. So if you're getting like five or six per game, now you're probably going to be getting three to four. Some games you're going to get five, but usually at that point you're snowballing and you were playing under your hero. You're probably still be getting the same amount of ultimates, but I digress. This right here, when you would go back, you could guarantee yourself like two to three kills just by pouncing on the right people and being backed up with your supports. Now, that two to three people guaranteed might come one or two people, which is still really good. But I need you guys to once again notice something. If you're playing against people who hit shots, know when to group, know when to peel for their healers, know when to actually move forward and take space. When you're playing the quote unquote optimal way of playing Overwatch, this just put that, put Genji in a little chokehold and just yeah, that's right. Go sleep. Go sleep. Go sleep, little ninja. Go to sleep. Go to sleep, man. Shh. Shh. They 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 quietly killed them, man. They quiet quit Genji from the meta. That's what they did. Now, dialing back that a little further, if you're playing in lower rank where people don't know how to do those things, this character's still going to dive you and punish you for like you're still going in the L column. This character is still putting you in the body bag because your your your, your tanks and your DPS they're not coming back to peel for you support. Your lonely Zenyatta just going discard on Genji. No one's looking at the Genji. They're all in their own one v ones over yonder, and you're like help, help, oh god, you're you're still dead. You're still dead. He didn't need thirty shurikens to kill you. Your little mercy, you're zipping around, and next thing you know, you get dashed. You're dead. You lost. GG's. Congratulations. Shake their hand. Like you, you, you're still losing at that point. So for a lot of people, these changes aren't even going to affect your games. They're just not. But the higher you go, the more you're going to be feeling this one, especially this one. This was not honestly, I'm be honest with this one's not that bad. This is the one where you, you're getting, you're getting kind of crippled because you're reloading a lot more often. And trust me, no matter how big your clip and magnet magazine size is for any character, Take away two to three, five bullets away from somebody. Just take that away. Just take them. And just watch how many times you're like, man, if I just didn't have to reload right now, they'd be dead. Think about how many times you think about that. Or when you were an Ana player and you only had like 12 shots before you had 15. Imagine back then when you were like, man, if I just had one more shot and didn't have to reload, imagine how you'd live. Just think about that. Now, this one I don't get. Junkrat Steel Trap, for whatever reason, they've they've decided they were going to nerf Junkrat. Now, granted, this was all in the last patch, so if somebody felt like something was off, now you know why, but, like, this is this is weird. You nerf Junkrat, and Soldier, you know, we'll, we'll get to that in a second as well. Now we come down to Sombra. While Sombra's rework, we uh, she gained a lot more damage to help account for the reduced ability lockout duration of hack. This has proven to be too deadly for a flanker with easy access to the enemy backline, especially in 5v5. Well, no, duh. However, the nerfs are ability lockout duration reduced from 1.75 to 1.5. And once again, while that's cool, I guess, that's not really a big deal breaker. Like, we would have just kind of shoulder shrugged that that was the only nerf. Hacked enemies are no longer valid targets for hacking during the duration of the eight second effect. This is a great change because now you can't continuously stack hacks on people and make it to where they don't want to peek because they're going to be taking extra damage for a multitude of seconds, whether it be anywhere from 16 seconds, 24 seconds, 32 seconds if the fight's lasting that long and you're just bullying somebody. So you can't just, you know, continuously do it to them because you can hack while invisible. So in there, you could just be on a perch somewhere and like, you know, make life hell for someone. Now, hack enemy damage multiplier reduced from 
to 25%. Now, personally, this is a really big one. I'm sure this is going to hurt a lot of people. There's definitely going to be a lot of kills that you were going to be able to secure that are not going to be so, so secured right now with the same amount of aim and mechanics that you currently have. A lot of you, when you guys would just do enough damage, you would translocate just in the nick of time. That person is still going to be alive in the current version of the game. Now, what I would have done is I would have honestly taken this down to like maybe 15. And then I would have changed this and gave it a buff here to 2.5 seconds. So now she's not killing you, but now she's crippling your team from a what you have in cooldown management, what you're able to do for two and a half seconds. I feel as though cutting this all the way down to hell, even 10% would have been fine if this went up to like 2.5. But this is what they chose to do. We're going to see how that shakes out for the Sombra players out there. As for Kiriko, I don't even want to talk about this one. Like, this is this is like such a negligible, who cares? I don't think anybody was playing this character because like, oh my god, that swift step and vulnerability really saved me. And it's only like, what, 0.15 seconds? Like, this is not like a big deal. I don't think anyone cares about that. The Suzu grenade, the cleanse, the big burst healing, the two tap headshot and squishies. I think all of that supersedes before anybody even cared to even acknowledge that this was even a thing. Because while Swift Step was really good, being able to go through walls and whatnot, I don't think anybody was abusing the invincibility frames of the teleport. I could be wrong. I just don't see like people just, maybe I just haven't seen the clips. But I don't think this is going to change anything about her. Because, I mean, let's face it, she's got one of the, what, the top two ults in the entire game. Plus all the other things that I mentioned earlier. So, like, that once again, slap on the wrist. Uh, what I don't understand is we got a Junkrat nerf and a D.Va nerf. And while I hate Genji, and I think Genji's one of, like, my worst matchups in terms of actually fighting a character, we got a Genji nerf where we got a Soldier nerf? Like, look, I'm one of the few people here on YouTube who can make this joke, so I'm going to make it. Guys, I wholeheartedly understand that Black Lives Matter. But Sojourn gotta go, y'all. What are we doing, fam? What what, what is this? We're, uh, we allow this? Well, actually, no. In Overwatch, I don't think Black Lives Matter because, I mean, have you seen have, have you seen what they've done to Doomfist? Come on now. I don't know. You're sending me mixed signals, Overwatch team. Come on now. You be better. Anyways, Sojourn, can we talk about that? Are we allowed to talk? I'm allowed to talk about that. Ma'am, take their take our kneecaps. What what did, what did, what did they do in, uh, in um... I don't forgot the name of that game. Among Us. Yeah, yeah. Eject her. Throw her out. We don't want her Among Us anymore. She is the imposter. Get her out of here. I will call the best security detail I can manage, and we will escort her out by force if necessary. It's okay, Overwatch team. I got you. I got you. But she's got to go. And I know y'all make the argument, because y'all have came out in a developer note and said, in the lower ranks, her performance isn't very good. Okay, neither is Widow's. And I remember in Overwatch 1, you definitely nerfed her by giving her less health. And I know what you're saying. Well, in the lower ranks, you know, she's not really that good. Okay. Genji wasn't really that amazing in the lower ranks. You nerfed him. Matter of fact, in the super low ranks, I know for a fact, I know for a fact that Moira is going crazy right now. No Moira nerfs. Junkrat's going crazy in the low ranks, so you nerf them and... I just want some consistency. That's all I'm saying. Anyways, these patch notes are weird. I don't really hate them. I just kind of scratch my head at some of the decision making that they made here. If you guys like what you saw, y'all know what to do. Go ahead and uh, like the video and go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any of the further content I plan on bringing you. I don't know where that voice came from. I am I am literally wired. I should not have had this Coca-Cola. I should not have ordered this. This was a mistake. But y'all have a great set of games and an even better day. And I'll catch you on the next upload. MFC out.